Right then, Pete. So last year we had new machine come, didn't we? New yeah. uh, combine. Basically the same as the old one. A few upgrades, got LED lights, got a bigger grain tank, bigger engine. But basically the same machine as the old combine. Yeah. Wasn't the best years in terms of uh, crops to try it on, was it? Yield-wise, there yeah. was nothing really to test it. No. So we we we've got, but we have got some nice winter wheat in this year. That's looking promising, haven't we? So. Um, yeah, we'll get a better test this year. The header's not here, so you won't see Every the header. Every year is different. Every year is different. You know, we won't. Uh, no, no. Well, talk me through it. Why did you change your old one? Because you loved your old one, didn't you? Yeah. Mainly the header, people. Yeah, the, the header was an issue on the old one. It, it, it sat, sat backwards. The back of the header dragged yeah. the ground before the knife was actually low enough to cut. Uh, anything that was laid. Right. So Whereas what's the different on this, this one? one? This one can be pitched forward. You can see it's pitched forward at the moment. Right. Because we had a load of laid stuff last year. Yeah. You undo all these bolts, pitch that forward, which means the knife is the lowest point of the header then. Right. So you can get the knife down under the crop without dragging the header on the ground and bulldozing. Okay. What pulls that back MP? Beat this bolt here. Yeah. So you undo those, those, yeah. those, yeah. and they saw down there. Yeah. And you wind it back to that. Yeah, okay. That, that's where it, that mark there is where it came set from the factory. Yeah. So if you put it back to there, if you haven't got any laid stuff, you should be fine. Yeah. Is there any more adjustment in that, Pete, or is that as far as it goes? It'll go a little bit further. That That's just covering the part of the slot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's it not maxed go out. It's not maxed out, no. Right, and did it make a difference? Oh yeah, chalk and cheese. Really? Yeah, because we had loads of laid stuff and I don't think it bulldozed at all actually. No. no. We were cutting laid, laid stuff and laid oats, laid barley. We would have been struggling oh, it drives you mad. In, in the wet especially, yeah, when, it's it, when it's wet. <laughs> uh, and the, the moment the header touches the floor, that, that was an issue. Yeah, it just drives you mad. You know, it slows your work rate down. You, you the, the, the old 68 was a, was actually a better header, wasn't it? Was. it? You could shave respect. the ground with you that know, thing. That was, and yeah, that was brilliant. But I noticed this one cuts beautifully level as well. Yeah. The old one used to just always be an inch higher. Yeah, one it end, was always it? a little bit lower one end to the other. But I did notice then that. that. That even makes the problem worse. Well, that end's always going to be the one yeah. dragging, isn't it? The only good thing is you knew which end to look yeah. for. That was yeah. perhaps the only thing you could say, but. And this one came from Russell's, didn't it, Farmer? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was a thing with Turner's map that... Well, they know. couldn't find you one, could they, basically? No. Oh. And it's got slightly bigger tyres? Yeah. Is that beneficial at all? What does that do for well, you? in theory, it should uh, travel a bit better on wet conditions. Sits a bit higher up because of it. Yeah. In essence, it's the same... Combat, yeah, you know, the internals and everything matter. It's, it's identical combat. The cab's a bit nicer inside. Yeah, we'll it's, got, it's got bigger grain lids, so you can get more grain in the tank, and it's got a higher horsepower engine. How, how much more? How many tons more can you fit in well, there? I think it's a couple of tons extra. Two tons more. But if, we, if we'd if we have bought the same combine, that would that. Yeah, the old header. combine with one of those trunkings on. We, 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 you wouldn't have, been, have changed it. No, well, no. That was a, we, that we, was I looked at changing point. the trunking, you know, on the old one. Yeah. You know, we did. I looked at sort of all sorts, and then we, you know, we looked at. Jim said about you know, putting bigger wheels on the back, and as we looked at that, whether we could tilt it forward doing that. But then we sort of decided that that was wasn't the way to go and we'd had no issues with the combine no it was a brilliant brilliant combine it was yeah turners had just changed salesman mate and he wasn't on this game not no. at all he wasn't you know compared to what nigel was yeah this lad wasn't in the same league no well, i don't think they had the combine you were looking for in stock anywhere anyway we went and looked at one didn't we that they had and it was a wreck so we walked away from it but it was quite new as well wasn't it that one yeah it's the same age as this one really, mm -hmm. but to, to find a straw walking machine and like rocking horse yeah yeah quite rare yeah well, everybody's on rotaries now right if you want a rotary you've got choice of 25 30 combines yeah right if you want a walker machine you've got a choice of two perhaps is that a fashion thing or is it uh what is that all about well they Everybody's gone to Rotary for the output, but yeah. because we want some decent straw, yeah, 
you got you, and I'm not I'm not convinced that a rotary is that much more output no oh, not, so is it not a massively no no um, whether they're a bit simpler map I yeah. don't know I don't know the reasoning behind it you mm. know um, uh, somebody that's on a rotary would tell you why they've gone to a rotary that that you know that's the better yeah. way to I think the running costs are higher on a rotary as well I have no clue Pete honestly um, and we've got the same size header 25 foot yeah. header yeah why yeah. didn't you go then why say didn't you go for a 40 foot the combine can handle it why don't you do that because we've got to change all our gates mate we can get through most of the gates most with a of our 25 gates. foot they're 30 foot most if of the you gate. stick 40 foots on 40 foot header on that can you go the same speed you're going no it'll a, slow a, you down and you'll be cutting I don't, I don't know whether these are designed for a 40 foot header mate i think they, they're certainly designed for 30 foot yeah you know you you could put a 30 foot header on this with no issues yeah but our gateways were 30 foot wide Right. So uh, all uh, Horton come Studley. So all your time all gained would seven be seven fields. Yeah. Yeah. Pete would have to take the header off. So all your time gained would be all your time lost yeah. in taking the header off just to go through a, from one side of the hedge to the other. So it made no sense to go or bigger there. Or change all the gates. Yeah. You know that's that's the other way you can do it. I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. No. No. We do a lot of baling with the small baler. Well, quite honestly, on a good crop, it's as much as the little baler wants to cope with. Yeah, it's yeah. Twenty-five than, foot. It? It's more than you know adequate. If you had forty foot, then the straw coming out of that would be massive, would it? Yeah. The the heaps would be. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You're, you're, you're nearly twice the amount yeah, of straw in a row. Right. Okay. So on this one, Pete, they upgraded your lights for you, didn't they? You got LED lights at the top. LED lights all round everything. Yeah. And it, just transforms it in, uh, in the dark. In it's the, just you switch the lights on and it's daylight again. It's something else, isn't it, Farmer? Yeah. Compared to that old oh, one, it's like fantastic. turning on the sun. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Super impressive, the lights on it, weren't they? And can we, we have a look we, at we, we were lucky to find this, really, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're yeah. a really strange story, Matt. The lads that bought our combine yeah. put me onto this one. Right. And they, the guy that they'd been they got him looking for a combine for them he rang them up and said i've got this combine they said well we bought one but i know a man that might be interested in it yeah and that, it was a, it was a, just a strange coincidence was it, it was literally the only one around that yeah year, wasn't it you yeah didn't find them anywhere and it, you know we we were straight with turners matt we well, rang turners i said to them look we're going to look at this machine so it wasn't something that was done underhand they were trying to be clever it wasn't a prize thing or anything like that no the land at turners told me that you couldn't get one yeah but you went um, to foot turners first of all didn't yeah. you and they literally yeah, yeah. couldn't couldn't find you a combo no and he's a nice guy wasn't he yeah lovely fantastic but your old one had been sold and gone you're yeah. committed you've got yeah. to buy a combine haven't you you can't yeah. mess about no. And what um, you telling me, Pete? The controls are slightly different to this model than ours. Yeah, they're a lot different. Um, and the old stick would just basically push it forward and it go forward, pull it back and it go back. Yeah. Whereas this one, you just click it forward and then you're in forward mode. And you keep pulsing it forward to go faster and There's faster. There's some old tramp coming in there. <laughs> Come and have a look. <laughs> Wondering what we're all doing. Come and see what you can steal. But did, did you prefer that? Do you pref which way do you prefer? Now I've got used to this. I like this. Oh, but right. when I first started, I hated it. I remember I'd sat on you the first time you were using it and yeah. you weren't convinced where you were no, at the start. But once you get used to it, I think it is a step forward. Yeah. And it's got cruise control on it, which is a, a plus point. So yeah. You just press a, bu press a button and you're back up to your work speed. You don't have to sit there pushing the stick and looking at the speed, push the stick, look at the speed. You yeah. Just press a button and it, it takes itself there. Should we have a look up in the cab? Yeah. Do you want to have a look in the cab? Bit warmer in here. Yeah. Yeah, we've. Uh, oh man, it still smells new. Smells here. like new car, doesn't yeah. it? Smells lovely. So we've got a camera up here for the unloading order. When this all boots up, we've got a camera, reverse camera comes on when you select reverse. Yeah. That's all handy stuff to have, isn't it? Yeah. Really? This is your joystick now, so you push it forward like that and then you're in forward mode. Right. And then you just keep pulsing it like that to go faster 
or you just hit the autopilot one and yeah. it'll take you up to your preset forward speed which you set on the screen here. Yeah. And the, how do you operate? the reverse camera, look. So, as soon as you select reverse, the camera comes on there. Right. What are all your other switches then, Pete? Uh, that's your drum speed. Yeah. That's your concave gap. Right. That's your fan speed. Yeah. That's your upper sieves and lower sieves. Right, and, and you change those from crop to crop, don't you? Yeah, and if you look at the numbers on the, I like this. Yeah, go back. There's your sieve setting there and there, look. Yeah. So I'll operate that. They're changing. Now underneath it's changing the gap, isn't it? So it's closed the sieves up in the back. Yeah. So they were fully open because when we finished with it we opened them flip right up. Right. So you did operate everything from in here. This one closes your grain tank lid, so they will be closing now. Have you got to remember to open that before you use it? You have, but a warning comes up on the screen if you don't. Yeah. You don't want to go down the road with it's a It's more important to remember to close it when you're driving a barn, because you'll make a mess with your lids. Yes, obviously, yes. And again, if you don't close it going down the road, it will tell you. If you, if what you don't else open we... it when you start the internals, it will tell you. Yeah, what else you got in there? Uh, it's it's pre-wired pre for auto steer, but we haven't got it. No, and I bet you've got a there, button on here, haven't you, for there, that? There's your, yeah, there's, switch it on there, and then you press... So, so if we were to buy a dome I'm not sure which for up there, yeah, this thing would do it straight it, Steer on. itself, yeah. yeah. That puts your internals in gear, internals of the combine. Yeah. That puts your header in gear. Yeah. You've got two preset header heights for pressure control, which relies on the pressure in the rams to follow the ground contours. I never use that, I just use those two. Right. So you, you have a preset say, for standing corn, yeah. and if you come to an area where the corn's laid, you go on to preset two, which is a lower one, and then it will pick up the low, low lane and stuff. What about these, uh, what are those, the yeah. orange ones? The orange one's the engine RPM. See. So that's, I see. that's that one. These are all your chopper controls to steer the chopper vanes left or right, depending right. on whether you have a crosswind or anything. Oh right, wow, that's clever. The old one had those as well. Though. Oh right, yeah. What's uh, this um, three, one, and that's, two? That's your gears. So you're in three. That's neutral. That's two, and that's one. What's faster? Uh, you go all the way up to four. Oh, on four's the, faster. On the, on the road, you're four. You can use three in the field, but you generally use two and one, to be honest. Yeah. And what's your cutting speed? What's a good? What do you usually cut? At? Well, five or six k. It all depends how thick your crop is. Right. And up here, Pete, what's all going on up here? Oh my God, it's more buttons. That's the heating and ventilation. Air it's, conditioning. It's very neat, isn't it? Yeah. Like inside is. So dial it in there, and the temperature comes up on there. Look, set twenty degrees, or so you keep dialing down. 16. You were saying to me as well, you've got a cooled seat. Yeah. And cool. heated. And heated. So it blows a fan? Well, it blows freezing cold. Is it co cold? It is freezing cold. Freezing it's cold. It's too cold. I don't turn it on. No. It's just too cold. Electric mirrors, uh, windscreen wipers, hazard lights. This is your light package. So you just press one button. Press that one. All the lights come on. It's only the road light thing. Work lights, I can't remember. Oh no, that's work lights. They don't look much in the daylight, do they, Pete? But uh, in the night, they are incredibly. And then, then when you're on the road, you go into what's called road mode. There's a button for road mode, or is it there? Yeah. And then you press that button, and just the road legal lights come on then. Right. So a lot of these lights are not legal for on the road because they're too bright. Yeah. So that one's for the road and that one's for work. Right. Sweet. Um, Can we have a look under the panels and stuff? Yeah, if you like. And you've got an interior light up here, Pete? Yeah, I've got your sat on a fridge. What? 
You haven't got a fridge. I have a fridge in there, look. An actual... Real fridge. And that it's one's cold. cleaning. It's freezing cold fridge as well. Yeah. And you've got, this one's fitted with air compressors, isn't it? Yes. So you can dust your own. So I've got my own air line to What's put. up here? What's in there? Just a cubby hole, just for... Just something for storage. Yeah. And this here, Peter, is where you would pull out your grain, is it? Where, where is it? This one? Grain sample there, yeah. So you, that yeah. goes into the tank, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So the grain tank can be full up, and you can still put your hand in there and get a grain sample without any leaking out. Right. Pete will open the panels up for us. This thing, this, I don't know why, but it just looks bigger than the old one. You, you just, don't think it is, do you? Well, no, it's just because of the um, bigger tyres. Yeah. It is a little bit taller than the old one, but not massively. Pete, we've just watched a video of you mending something. You were taking some belts apart. Oh, that was this, this thing, yeah, that bearing there. What was wrong with the bearing? Well, there was nothing wrong with the bearing. They're, the bearing's clamped between two triangular flanges. I don't know whether you can see them under there. But the bolts had come loose and fell out and just let the flanges apart and then the bearing was loose. So that's the unloading auger belt. Right. So it let it go slack. Yeah. I turned the unloading auger on to start unloading a load. It started unloading and then it started slipping right. and burnt the belt out. So okay. there, were, there was uh, a lot of smoke everywhere. And is that now sorted? That's sorted now, yeah. yeah. New, new belt and just put the clamps back on there. I can see a hole here, Pete. Where, what's that for? That's, uh, that's the unloading auger. So the, the two augers bring the corner across from the bottom of the tank, and then it falls into there, it goes up there and along. Oh, and then out this back. Yeah. So what, what else am I looking at here, Pete? Roughly. Is I know it, we've this done this before on the old yeah, one. But this is your concave. That there. Yeah. And this is your drum, these shiny bars there. Well, the drum spins round, driven by that pulley. And all the straw and corn goes in that little gap between the two. That tiny gap? That tiny gap, yeah. That's what thrushes the uh, grain out from the straw. It's set about 10 mil. So all that straw and stuff goes through that 10 mil gap right. when you're working. And is anything different under here with your no, old one? Nothing. Not it's the same. Just the same. And what's under these panels? Anything good? Just bits and bobs. Just tools and stuff. Oh, just more access. This is a refresher, isn't it? That's three returns. Anything that doesn't get sieved, yeah, it goes over the back into an auger and then brought back up here. These paddles spin round and throw it back in right. to get sieved again and rethrashed. And that makes a difference? Yeah, oh yeah, it's going all the time, yeah. Hmm. It, it looks if, you, like it. if you just want a little difference uh, on a, on a Massey, on the, on not, I don't know about the new ones, but on the old Massey, that used to come out and just drop out, and it used to drop on one side of the sieves. Yeah, overloads so the sieves on the edge. So you always overloaded one side of the sieves, yeah. and it, it was bloody rubbish. This thing throws it straight across. Yeah, and it's got one either side. Did the Massey have one either no, side? No, no, no. Of course it didn't. No, this one's got <laughs> one of the one of these either side. So this one throws it across halfway, I presume. The one the other side throws it back from the other side halfway. Right. So you're spreading it across your sieve beds then. Yeah. There's very little difference in that piece, is it, to a, a 34, a no, TX34. Well, basic. the, the, the basics of it are, you know, there's one or two things with actual drum and stuff like that in there. There's, there's, there are things that are different than that, yeah. but the basics of it, Christ, it's, it's majority, almost a thrashing box on wheels. I think it is a thrashing box on wheels, that's all it is, isn't it? What's in here then, Pete? This looks like a computer that's or something. That's the uh, ECU that runs the engine, I should imagine, all the fuses and relays in there. Yeah. Never delve in. There's so many belts everywhere. Yeah, well, there's lots of things to be driven, and that, it belts is the easiest way to do it, I suppose. Is there one main belt that runs everything? Oh, that yeah. everything else drives. Is that? That's the main drive off the engine. That takes all the power from the engine, takes yeah. it to that, which transfers it from that pulley to that pulley. There's another one up there driven off another gearbox which just does the unloading of the old uh, corn. Yeah. But that shaft will transfer through to the other side of the engine and then they'll take loads of belts off it the other side to drive other things. Right. 
But that's that's your engine. That's a, that's a massive amount of power to be going through that belt. To go through a belt, I know. It's a big belt, isn't it? But that's your main crank of your engine now. You, you, you can follow in front forward, Matt, so you can see what comes off your engine onto that. Then this one then drives off the back of this pulley forward, doesn't it? Yeah. I would suspect that shaft goes right through. What well, I don't know what's on the other side. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a belt up to there, and then there's another belt that goes you know, down the so elevator you, trunk you and the drive the header. Your belt's matched. So yeah. If, you, if that makes sense. Why why is this one on a chain then? Why is that not belt driven? That's your unloading auger. I, I, why they use chain instead of a belt, I don't really know. But that'd be a reason for it, wouldn't there? And there's a lot of hydraulics going on as well. Are these all hydraulic lines? That's all the hydraulics, yeah. But that, that big pump up there, yes, that, that the supplies oil. oil down here, is hydrostatically driven, you see. That just supplies a big motor on the gearbox, which drives the combine along. Right. So in essence, it's hydraulically driven along. Right. And then we come round to the back. What's this dial here then, Pete? That speeds up and slows down your chaff spreader. Just so you get it to throw full width to the header. So if you had a 40 foot header, you need to speed it up a bit, to get yeah. it throw a bit further. Okay. And uh, there's a little uh, Brucey secret thing under here, Pete. What's the chain for then? Chaps anti-static chain. Stops your This window. is something we we fi you figured out when we. Well, I didn't. A couple years ago. I saw it on um, YouTube, to be honest, and I tried it, and it does make a difference. I thought it was a load of rubbish, but yeah. it does actually. So what that that saves you washing your windows quite so much. Yeah, I mean I don't. Some, it some days, the... some days I used to clean my windows. If you're in a particularly dusty crop, you could clean your get out, clean your windows four or five times a day. Yeah. But I wash my windows every morning, and I don't have to get out and clean them ever during the day at all. No. So it it must be doing something. Yeah. So yeah, some sort of anti-static. And and you just bolt that off the bottom here. Doesn't matter where it goes, Abby. As long as it's solid metal. Yeah. We'll just unhook it, and let it dangle down, and drag the ground. And there's—is this a hitch to pull its own drawbar? This is the hitch for pulling the header. It, sw oh, right. it swings round to the centre position. Oh, I got you. So you can pull your own header if you want to. Yeah. I don't know if that's advisable that's or not. <laughs> the road. I wouldn't want a header behind as well. Uh, let's have a look under here then, Pete. All right, we're on to getting in. <laughs> you see anything? It's dark. What are you looking at here? These are your shit, sieves. Yeah. That's the shaker shoe up the front, so that all the corn drops through, lands on there, and that's shaking backwards and forwards. Right. And it transfers the grain backwards all the time. Yeah. And it comes out through onto these sieves. Yeah. And they sort out all the rubbish from the from the grain, clean up. Where grain. where does it get rethrashed then? You tell you said. Well, that goes that goes back up the front. You can't see it from here. That gap gets taken back up the front there. Where does it fall? It throws it back into the uh, shaker shoe at the front. Yeah, but it doesn't fall onto here and then go somewhere else to be refreshed. The It goes through these sieves. Oh, those. It goes through that. And then uh, underneath, there's another set of sieves under there. Oh, right. So anything that comes over these falls in here. Yeah. And that goes back to be thrown over the front again. Yeah. Any clean grain falls through these onto the bottom sieves and then falls through they sieve out rubbish and it falls through and goes up into the tank. Right. You, and above us is the walkers for the straw. Straw walkers, yeah. And what are those knives? They look like three knives across the middle there. They're, they're just to keep stuff separated. When you're on a slope, if you were sloping left or right, all the corner run to the left or the right of the sieves. Right. So that that's just to keep it keep it all level in, across in, the li in line sort of. Thing. And then these throw out the rubbish. These spin really fast, don't they, Pete? Yeah. Do these ever block up? No, nope, never had them block up. Because uh, the Americans have them block up, don't they? They're yeah, but they're they're running rotary combines. I don't know whether that. Yeah, a bit different, aren't they? And then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I had to sit it on. Uh, it, that, you didn't run it on there. Yeah, I did. did. Yeah. 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 What is it? It speeds up and slows down the straw walkers. Oh. So if you're going down a hill, yeah. it's having to work harder to throw the straw out the back of the combine, so it speeds them up. Right. And then when you're going up a hill, you don't want it throwing it out the back before it's thrashed it. Yeah. So it slows them down, so it's in the combine longer. Yeah. 
So let's come around the back end, Pete, because this is starting to run out. So we've got a, where's the knives to, for it to chop up? Poke your finger in there. Well, we'll be able to see. I've got the paddle in the wrong way. You have to look in here. Oh, we're up under here, are we? So when you engage this, does this slide forwards or slide? No, all you do. There's your straw walkers. Right. So the straw comes out of here, slides down here, if you're having a row. Yeah. And if you watch what happens in there. Yeah. I yeah. see, now your straw is so going So the straw else. comes onto there, hits that, and falls down into the chopper. Which is under here. Oh God, they're going to bash me out of And under there is all the knives. What are these knives doing? How fast are these going, Pete? But it comes out like dust, doesn't it? Yeah. And then these these veins steer it wherever you want it, left or right. You said you could adjust which yeah, way it steers. Their work is an electro hydraulic ram there. Look, oh. stick, you can steer them left or right. Because if you've got a crosswind, yeah, it'll, you've got to throw it against the wind because it'll just go miles. We'll just go up top, Pete, and have a look at the engine quick. He's loving this, he's loving this, isn't he? <laughs> got him here on got him here on it. <laughs> got him here on his day off. Oh. Right, we're going up. <sighs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Right then Pete. So we did this with the old one, didn't we? Is there anything different up here? It's a bigger engine. Um this one's got an air compressor on it, just there. Yeah. So you get compressed air and it stores it in that tank, just there. Oh yeah, big air tank. Yeah. Uh, it's a bigger engine. It's uh, 415 horsepower. Right. Fiat powertrain engine, the same as the other one. Fiat. Well, FPT. It's not. It's, it's, I don't know how it works. Yeah. Um, it's got an, an upgraded emission system. It's higher tier. Emission system on this. Right. We've got a few more bits and pieces on the exhaust system. Yeah. Don't ask me how it's no. worked. But no. I don't understand that much at all. And this is where the air comes in for the radiator. Radiator. Yeah. That will open if you. Uh, hang on. You open it. I don't want to fall off. Can I stand on anything wrong here? That's your cooling rads in there. Air conditioning. So you'll see these things going round, Pete. What's that doing? This is just to stop all the rubbish and stuff getting sucked in and blocking the radiator up. Right. So it's, it's a, a cleaner. It's a sort of a cleaner, yeah. And then we'll go up top as well, Pete. What's up here? Oh my God, that is bigger, isn't it? Main tank. Yeah. The old one used to finish at least half, well, a bit more than halfway down that. It finished the old yeah. one, so that's how high that was. So this one was quite a bit higher. Tell me about there's a story going around. Someone went in there with it on. Oh, somebody I used to know. Yeah, uh, they had a combine and the corn was damp. And it bridged in the in the. They were trying to unload and it bridged in the tank. Yeah. So all the corn at the bottom had all got out and left the corn stood up. So he climbed in there with a broom handle, poking it down, make it fall down and unload. And he slipped in and lost his leg. It chewed his leg off. And he up, managed to get himself out, up, didn't up, he? Yeah, chewed his leg off up to his knee, and he managed to get out. And uh, he phoned. I think somebody found him, or he phoned anyway. They strapped his leg up, stopping bleeding, and uh, he lost. He lost his leg, but he became a bus driver. Do it. Yeah. So <laughs> good man. It can't be that difficult, can yeah. it? Oh no, it can't. Obviously, you can do it with one leg. <laughs> Here we go. But this is where it brings a corner. Uh, yeah, Things corn corner, through there. and then it fills yeah. this whole area. There's augers along the bottom that take it out to the side. And then out, yeah. out the back. Oh my god, we're really high and I don't like heights. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's where, where your dome, dome goes. Yeah. It's you, all uh, pre-wired, like you just got to plug it in. Yeah. I wonder what that would cost to put one on there. Probably do, you don't really have a need for it, do you? Not really. It's not like an essential thing we need. But more than a, no a nice to have, more than a need, isn't it? That yeah. sort of thing. Right, we are. We don't hold it. Right, there we go. And then 
We've got a load more this side. Again, we've got the returns coming up this side and gets thrown in. There's a re-thrasher in the end of there that yep. just re-thrashes anything before it comes up and gets thrown in. Um, it's not much on this side. Fuel tank. That's a fuel tank, is it? Yeah, all that there. Oh, wow. Holds about 1,000 litres. How many will it use in a day? Oh, well, we have a good, good long day. You go through 600 of that, I suppose. 600 litres a day? Yeah. So if, you, if, you, if you're paying pump it. prices, that's uh, <laughs> a 600. A load of brass. Yes. Nearly a thousand quid a day to run it oh, yeah. on pump prices, yeah. wouldn't it? Um, yeah, more bouts this side running other things, are they? Yeah, like I said, some of those, that shaft there will come through from the other side of the combine. That big one I showed you. Yeah. That will come through and then it drives there, which then drives down to there. They're all just a continuation on from, from one shaft that's supplying everything. Really. What, are, what are these? They're the unloading augers that sit in the bottom of the tank. Oh yes, yes. Just got all the traps undone to uh, when I cleaned it out and stopped vermin getting in there. And yeah, stop any rats and stuff. So they, they transport the grain across to the other side because that's where the unloading auger is. Yeah. There's a lot going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you can see so why when, they cost when, a bit of money now. When you consider what that. goes in the front, and you try and rub a bit of grain out in Take, your hand. Takes forever. And you see what that can do. Phenomenal. It's doing it. Oh, a thousand times over every minute. Yeah, absolutely yeah. bloody phenomenal. Incredible yeah. machine. Right, there we go then. That's a look at everything. You've had a look at it all now. So uh, I did promise you a few, well, ages ago, but um, we, we finally got through it. Hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, big thanks to Pete and Ag for uh, taking their time to show me because uh, they should be doing other things but um, yeah they've taken their time to help me get the tractors out and stuff like that so thanks to those guys and uh, yeah hopefully we get some nice footage of this this year we'll see the way which way the year goes uh, we're always busy but um, we'll try and get some nice drone shots for you this year and we'll have some nice winter wheat for it to cut as well so uh, we'll get another ride on with Pete when he's doing that but um, yeah, I hope you like that one. That's a little look at all the machines going. Yeah, pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks very much.